Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome. Thank you so very much for being here for the Kim and Benny Show. No, that's actually the name I just made up right then and there. Um, we are here together to have a gorgeous conversation or a conversation with a gorgeous human being, Nadine Hanshaw, who's in Canada, while Benny and I are in Australia. And it is the end of 2021 or nearing the end of 2021. <sighs> Haven't we had a huge year? So many trials and tribulations. And I have to say that Nadine is one of these very special souls who has contributed to the Positive Prime platform in more ways than one, but she has a session and it's called Heart Consciousness. It's one of my favorites. I believe that the last year or two, even though we've all been dealing with this COVID situation or the pandemic, the greatest impact has actually been on our hearts on the connections that we have with other people, with each other, with the entire globe's people. When others are in pain, whether we actually really know it or we appreciate it, accept it or are aware of it, we actually are in pain too. It does impact us in the quantum field. And so I believe that we have and unprecedented, and haven't we heard that word 10,000 million billion times over the last two years? I think we have an unprecedented moment of heart healing that has come upon us. And without further ado, I want to hand it over to Benny so that he can um, uh, ask the hip, cool, radical, whatever, um, I'm not a surf lingo person, questions of Nadine. And he can actually introduce Nadine formally and then we'll hear from Nadine. Thanks, Kim. Uh, that was a spectacular introduction, you know, um, but I'm blessed because uh, Nadine sent me, yeah, so much good stuff like to, to, to riff on. And I obviously checked out Nadine's website and, and whatnot, but here's, here's the formal introduction. <laughs> Uh, Nadine Hanshaw is an international best-selling author, global business ambassador with the Women's Speakers Association, and has over 30 years of experience in personal and professional development. As a personality profiling expert, Nadine is the developer of the PET personality process, which offers incredible insights into ourselves and others. Along with all of her psychological and communication expertise, her extensive training also includes physical disciplines like nutrition and energy work, meditation and spiritual studies, creating a very holistic approach. And on to the mission. This is beautiful. Nadine's mission is to truly assist people in reconnecting to their own spirit and innate wisdom and expand into heart consciousness to understand that we are all interconnected with each other and our planet. We not only have a better quality of life, we strive to provide a quality of life both for others and our planet. And that's beautiful. Um, Nadine is committed to helping awaken the heart of humanity through understanding this heart consciousness and believes that Positive Prime is a tool to assist people in moving in that direction. And that's why we are here today to have a conversation about that. So welcome, Nadine, and welcome, Kim. Thank you so much, Benny. Thank you for inviting me here. <laughs> More than welcome. That's awesome. And I, I just want to, I want to start where I, I I sense that people listening to this will want to start and that's um, for you to tell us a little bit about your story and how heart consciousness has become such a big part of it. Well, uh, let's see. I, I guess I've always had intuition. Um, I've always had messages uh, from my heart. I just didn't know that's where they were coming from, uh, inspiration and that kind of thing. But really, I guess my story started and, and, and I said this in my book as well, that when my brother was killed, um, when I was five years old and my older brother was getting married the next day, um, my second uh, oldest brother was killed in a hit and run accident. And my mom never really recovered. Um, and so I sort of became my mom's parent in a way <laughs> I became an overtly responsible person um, and a people pleaser and I actually was 
I guess I'm, I, I need to say that I'm, I'm grateful um, for all the lessons that I learned from going through that because they've served me in my, in my profession. Um, but I had to learn and I kept learning and opening up and trying to know myself. And I found people fascinating. I just found them absolutely fascinating. And so in my journey of discovering myself, I, I actually um, learned how to respect myself and love myself. And as I discovered different things like um, the Heart Math Institute, which is another institute that I greatly support, um, because it, it really your intuition resides in your heart. <laughs> and you need to tune into your heart's intelligence. And um, the Heart Math Institute has really truly done a great job in proving that. You know, if you're in your heart and you're in your heart consciousness, you actually, your impact to everyone around you is just so much. It, it impacts everyone. They come into alignment with you. Um, and one of the reasons I love Positive Prime is that it, it, it aligns the heart and the, and the head. And, um, you know, that's a, it's a beautiful tool to do that. And I don't know, the last two years, I think my mission has has become to alleviate people from what I call, well, the term that I heard recently was fear porn, um, <laughs> which is a new term that I'd never heard of before. Uh, and that is that, you know, fear causes us to go into a place where we're not listening to our intuition, where we're not developing you know, in ways that are serving us, where we're, where we're allowing ourselves to be manipulated, where, you know, it, it's just such a horrible place to reside. And, you know, we have a, a, a bias anyway, because we have that, you know, that reptilian brain that that's always looking for what's, you know, where's, where's the saber tooth tiger. Um, <laughs> and we don't have too many of those anymore. So, um, you know, I just, heart consciousness allows us to go into our wise brain, our wise self. And when we can come from that place, we're making better decisions. We're, we're making, you know, we're, we're making good choices. We're, we're allowing ourselves to not only accept ourselves and love ourselves and, and we're allowing ourselves to love other people. I don't know. Did that answer the question? <laughs> Cer certainly did. Yeah. I would love to hear from you if someone's going, oh, but how do I, like, how, how could I possibly do that myself? Is there, what would be like the first step that someone would take to start to feel into that heart consciousness? Well, really it's, it's much simpler than you think. Um, and one of the ways they can do it is actually through positive prime. <laughs> Uh, positive prime it really truly does align your 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 forebrain and your heart brain uh, and there there really is a brain in your heart most people don't even know that um, the heart in the math the heart math institute has actually um, proven that uh, and it, it's just a wonderful thing but positive prime helps to align that and you know in your in your brain we have a little matchmaker and you know it's called a, a reticular activating system or RAS for short and if you are watching the a positive prime session and you're seeing this gratitude and you're seeing these things that you appreciate and you you're seeing yourself in in good situations you're seeing the smiles the you're seeing the the nature you're seeing all of these things and you're doing this on a regular basis, what ends up happening is that little RAS or that reticular activating system is out there looking. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like when, you know, you're going to get a new car and, and, and you, let's say that you want to buy a Tesla. And then all of a sudden, everywhere you're seeing Teslas, Teslas, Teslas everywhere. <laughs> it's that little Raz going off in your brain that's looking for that. And Positive Prime is such a, an incredible tool that lines up that little matchmaker in your head with what you want to, what, what you're wanting to achieve or how you're wanting to be in the world. 
And that aligns with your heart and your heart is where the energy comes from in order to achieve your goals and in order to achieve all those things in your life. So it works really well for manifestation and just being the best person you can be. And really that's all we can ask. Or I, I know Kim wants to jump in here. <laughs> Is that, yeah, that was just, um, yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, interestingly enough, in my journey in the spa industry, um, I actually was being interviewed and a photograph was being taken for the front cover of a magazine. It was a spiritual magazine. And the photographer actually said, Is your name Serafini? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, you must be an angel. And I said, what do you mean? Why do you say that? And she said, well, it's because seraphinite or seraphiniite or this seraphim that's of the angels and there is a crystal and it allows you to communicate with angels. It's like this conduit facilitator. And I said, oh, wow, I was fascinated, a little skeptical, a little curious, a little inquisitive, a little fearful actually of the unknown. Anyway. As you would have it, out of the blue, this beautiful woman that I know locally, who's an energy healer, not a psychic, just somebody who does incredible spiritual work, she gifted me this huge piece of seraphonite within a couple of weeks, not knowing that I'd had this conversation, right? Anyway, it's green. And if you understand a little of the chakra energy healing system, or you understand the color of the heart, it's green, right? And what I find fascinating is that the green tree canopy research that's been done. So if I show you photographs of green tree canopy, we know that your eyes process that image and you actually start to produce more of the proteins inside your body that are responsible for your immune functioning. And the reality is, is that it's all interconnected and none of it can exist without the magic of everything else. And so even if you're not into crystal healing, right, you can't deny that there's been 5,000 years of wisdom in the Ayurvedic medicine tradition in order for us to even understand that there is this green color of the heart and that it heals. And so Nadine, the work that you're doing is absolutely essential. Absolutely essential. So critical. Before we go on, I just, this is one tiny little extra I wanna add in here. After my husband had open heart surgery for a quadruple bypass, unexpectedly, but he has a very rare condition um, that is not lifestyle orientated. And in his early 50s, he basically had a couple of very specific types of heart attacks. Anyway, the um, really dear friend of mine, Dr. Selena Bartlett, who is a neuroscientist, actually came to our house on Cameron's first night at home after the hospital. So this is after he'd gone through intensive care, after he'd gone through the week of rehab in the hospital. And she said to me, you know, Kim, there's a lot of research that I'm sure you're aware of. And that is that 80% of people who go through heart surgery end up with depression, clinical depression. And that's because when you, um, when you actually interfere with the heart intelligence by either uh, cutting the arteries or indeed in my case screwing some wires into it for my cardiac pacemaker another story you actually impact the way that the brain works and the head and the heart cannot be interrupted without consequences mm -hmm. can't be and she literally was sitting at this you know dining room table looking at Cameron and said because Kimbo created Positive Prime and you're so close to her, you might disregard the power of Positive Prime to literally create the connections between your heart and your brain. 
And I cannot let that happen. And that's why I've driven two hours to come and tell you that you must watch Positive Prime during this rehabilitation period over the next three to six months, because otherwise you will pay a price that you don't want to pay. You don't need to pay. And Nadine, the work that you do, you help people to understand this is a necessity. So tell us what else you want us to know and do. Well, let's see. I, I mean, I want to impact as many people as possible. I, I, my whole concept is to improve people's quality of life. And the way to do that is for them to learn, first of all, to love themselves. Second of all, to respect themselves. And, and third, to, to live from their heart because that's where their wisdom is, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, you know, the, the heart has plays such a huge part in, in so many things. Um, and, you know, as the Heart Math Institute has proven that the heart intelligence is constantly communicating <laughs> this way, but the, this brain doesn't communicate much back, it, which is interesting. So a lot of information goes from the heart to the brain. Um, to our head brain, which is, again, interesting, you know, when you think about it. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that, you know, people think about 80,000 thoughts, or eight, 80, yeah, about 80,000 thoughts a day. And, and about 80% of that is the same thoughts that they had thought the day before. And most of that is negative. And, you know, we need to question a lot of things. And one of the things we need to question is our belief systems. <laughs> and, you know, we, we've limited ourselves in so many ways. And one of the things that I, I also really truly believe with Positive Prime is that it helps us to shift from a limiting belief system to a more open and receptive belief system. And, you know, Benny, you were asking me, how can people start to get in touch with their heart consciousness and their intuition? Well, everyone has experiences of intuition. Some people may call it a different thing. They may call it inspiration or my, you know, my gut feeling or, you know, they've got lots of different names for it. But really, we get those inspirations or those intuitions when we're in a receptive state of mind. And so the more receptive we are, the more tuned in we are, and the more we can access that wisdom. And that usually comes from a place of calmness and openness. And again, when you're working with Positive Prime, you get into that wonderful state of calmness and openness. And so this is why I find this is a tool that I recommend to my to my clients, to my students. Um, and I recommend it for, for many different reasons, but mostly because it really helps them to get out of their anxiety or to, you know, change the way that they're thinking. You know, I, one client comes to mind, I remember when, when I, when he started using positive prime, he goes, I can feel it in my brain. <laughs> I can feel it rewiring. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it just does so many things for us. I don't know why, you know, anybody would not use Positive Prime, quite frankly. Um, it's just a tool that I believe in. Uh, and I, you know, I can't thank Kim enough for inventing that. And, um, you know, to, to have that formula that she has with it that really, truly um, puts us in that wonderful state. Um, now it, it takes, you know, this is what I would say to people. It takes a while, you know, you need to do it for a period of time to start to see the results from it. Um, and so, you know, you don't just watch it once and then go, Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> you know, it does take some time for it to actually do its magic. Um, the thing is, is that it's such an easy tool to use. Uh, it, it's so easy to sit down in front of your computer for, you know, three minutes. <laughs> I usually do five. 
but three minutes um, is good. <laughs> I love that point. I absolutely love that point, Nadine, because I often um, very gently encourage somebody that if it's not working for you fast enough, the um, truth that might be uncomfortable to come to terms with is you might be a lot more closed than you think you are. And the more closed you are, uh, it's all like a knot in your hair. Unless you want to cut it out and create this big chunk in your life, whatever that might be, leave a relationship, leave an employer, um, leave a business behind, whatever. Cutting out a, a knot is sometimes not the best thing to do. But if you very gently ease it out, it depends how knotted it is. And so it depends how knotted uh, you are actually around that heart energy, how squeezed off you are. And if it's taking a little bit longer, the truth is, is that you're probably a whole heap more knotted or closed than maybe you realized. For me, that's where we practice what it is that we preach and we actually try to drop into our heart. Um, Nadine, I've said this to you, I just want everybody who's listening or watching to know this. You're not 500 years old, but you've done so many qualifications and courses and you, you have expertise in so many areas. I have never come across anybody like you who is uh, an experienced practitioner in so many modalities. Can you please just help us to understand all of them, because I believe that your genius is about the synergistic combination of them all. And it has created a very special mix that has brought about you inventing, of course, your personality profiling system, which I've done. It is so incredibly accurate. So anyone who's listening or watching, you definitely need to go and see Nadine's website and um, make that available to yourself. Understanding yourself, I think, is one of the pathways to falling in love with yourself and respecting yourself. Um, but Nadine, tell us, tell us about, you know, all of the different courses that you've done, because it's actually these threads are in the work that you do. Well, Kim, um, I don't know if I can go into all of them <laughs> because I I am a perpetual student and I continue to, to learn and grow and I continue to develop. Uh, I think that as human beings, we are learning machines and uh, we need to continue to learn. I think that that's one of the things um, I would encourage everyone to do. Um, I am a trained nutritionist, a trained iridologist. I am a master trainer of neurolinguistic psychology or some call it neurolinguistic programming. Um, I am a counselor. I am I, I opened my first business when I was 19. I had a sporting goods store. Um, I've taught meditation. I, I teach personal growth courses. I teach business courses. <laughs> I teach manifestation courses. I, I teach heart consciousness courses. Uh, you know, I, um, I do a many, many different things. I, I work with energy. I, I'm a Reiki master. I am trained in Huna. Um, polarity <laughs> you know do, do i need to go on um yeah so i yes I, I have a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of tools in my toolbox and the the beauty of having all those tools is that when a person comes to see me or when i'm working with people they don't have to fit a particular model I actually design the therapy or design the coaching or design the course or whatever it is around the, that person or that organization or, or that, you know, that, that group or that team. Um, and so for me, it, it's getting, what is it that they need <laughs> and what's going to take them from where they are now to where they want to go as quickly as possible because my job is actually to work myself out of a job <laughs> and
And, uh, you know, because, and, you know, people say to me, Nadine, you know, do you have any, any, any time in your schedule? And I say, I always have time in my schedule because I'm always completing with people. <laughs> and, and they go, oh, because <laughs> um, that's not very usual, I guess. So I think that that I give people the tools so that they can have the tools for themselves because getting to know themselves, Kim, you're absolutely right. When you said getting to know yourself is the first step to loving yourself. And it's true, which is why I, I develop the personality pro processing uh, styles because truly when you truly get to know yourself, you know, you can actually accept who you are, both your, your gifts, because we all have gifts. We all have wonderful things to give the world. Every single person does. And we all have challenges. <laughs> and so it's like embracing our challenges and learning how to work with them. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that I have. I help people do it. So the one thing that I do with everyone is their pet personality process because um, and, and I get some funny reactions. People go, are you, have you been like following me around? <laughs> are you like psychic? <laughs> you know, because it, and it's just because I, I know their personality process. Yeah. <laughs> really How do we actually that, get uh, that done? Just before any, anyone's going, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I am the kind of person who, by the way, believes that you actually need to get it done several times through your life in several different kinds of ways. Like, I tell me about whether you think our personality shifts at all because of what we go through. Um, so this is where my system differs quite a bit from other systems. Um, other systems change from context to context. Um, other systems change as you develop through life. Um, in my system, you're actually born with, with your processing style. And it's as you get to know your processing style, as you get to work with your processing style, um, it, 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 it actually crosses all contexts and, 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 it, and you have it throughout your whole entire life. So it doesn't really change. The, the processing style doesn't change. How you work with it changes and how you develop with it changes. The, the, the processing style itself doesn't change. Um, how people can, can do it, they can do it on their own, actually, if they wanted to. Um, I wrote a book. There's the <laughs> behind me there is the cover of my book um, called Knowing Me, Knowing You, The Pet Personality Process. And they can get that on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, or uh, it's sold all around the world. Um, and they can do the little questionnaire. It's just 10 questions with four little answers below that they have to prioritize. And they, then they can go through and look it up for themselves. Or if they would rather have it done by me, then they can actually make a, a, an appointment <laughs> No matter where you are in the world, I work both virtually and in person, so um, they can make an appointment with me and I would be happy to go over it with them. I would send it to them and have them do it and then they would be like this with the with the zoom with you guys being in Australia and me being in Canada and um, I would go over it with them and then they can ask me questions. <laughs> Which, of course, is what I would recommend because that's what I went through. Um, and as well as I know myself, and I do, it's not like I haven't been through lots of different um, types or styles of understanding myself, processes, whatever you want to call them. I've had several different human design readings by several different masters. I've had, of course, you know, the Myers-Briggs and the DISC and the this and the that. But Nadine's right, there's nothing like hers on the planet. And I actually had a major aha in the consultation with her that has literally impacted every day since. Every day since I've had a, an awareness of my processing style and how I actually need to help myself out. It's quite remarkable. It is actually quite remarkable. We can give ourselves a whole heap less, less grief um, for those of us who, who are 
you know, growing and improving and we want to be our best, I think that sometimes we are actually really hard on ourselves because we haven't changed enough or transformed enough or sustained the new version of us that we're working towards, the enhanced best self, right? There's something really um, graceful about what Nadine does in terms of helping us just to give ourselves a little less grief. That's what I liked about it. Anyway, maybe it means that I'm just more calm in my heart. And that's your intention, isn't it? Yes, that's my intention. And and what I want to say to people is, you know, your past is your learning and your feedback. Take the gifts from your past and then leave it there. (laughs) Your future is your direction. And yeah, we all have goals and we all have things that we want to achieve in life. But where you actually accomplish that future is in the present. And so being present is so important in your life. And again, you know, when you're watching Positive Prime, it allows you to be more present. It's an open-eyed meditation in in my, that's how I call it anyway, uh, an open-eyed meditation. And, you know, life will lead us. Life is not a straight it's not it's not it's you know we'd like to think that it's from here to here and it's a straight line and everything's wonderful but life is like this <laughs> and and every one of those twists and turns and every one of those experiences is is a gift it's a gift there's a gift in every single experience that we have and even the gifts or even the experiences that we think of as negative um there are no experiences that are absolutely negative and absolutely positive. The, the, so you need to look for the gifts in each and every experience. And each of those gifts leads you to the next gift. And so by being open to your heart's wisdom and allowing yourself to be more in flow, uh, I know that's being used a lot that th- these days, the uh, in flow, um, as you're more in flow, you actually are, are guided to where you need to be and what experience you need to have next or what learning or, you know, that's how I've done all of my trainings, <laughs> all of the ones that Kim <laughs> keeps uh, talking about. Um, I, I did those because every single one of them has added something to who I need to be. And I just want to tell a little story, if that's okay. Do we have time for, for me to do that? Awesome. When, yeah. when I was first starting my practice in Victoria, I had a bodywork session. And it was, a, was called rolfing. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. But it, I hadn't, I, I'd had a lot of bodywork done. I'd had a lot of experiences. And every time I asked someone what it was like, they said, it's kind of like massage. <laughs> I need to tell you it's not. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I made an appointment with the fellow that taught everybody how to do this particular technique. And he, he was a, a nice fellow and all of that. However, um, it was one of the most interesting <laughs> experiences I've had um, because there's no massage oil or anything used and they work at moving the fascia around and so I would tell him that hurts and he would say breathe (laughs) and I would say that hurts I think you need to stop now and he would say breathe (laughs) and so I was on the table for like two hours being told to breathe and I really wanted him to stop but I at that point, I wasn't quite at the level I am now in terms of, <laughs> I would have probably hit him and got off the table, <laughs> but, but uh, I wouldn't have hit him. I'm not violent. But um, after having that session, I had to, I, I paid him and I left. And then I had to drive for three hours. And in that three hours of driving, I went through everything that a rape victim goes through. Um, I went through all the different stages, but in rapid succession as I was driving. And 
You know, I wouldn't have chosen to do that if I had known. But after that, I started to get people who had been through abuse and sexual abuse and rape. And I could relate to them on a totally different level, even though I personally hadn't had that particular experience, but because I had gone through that other experience. And so this is what I mean by saying that sometimes we don't choose the experiences, but they give us the gift. And if you look for the gift, there's always a gift. Benny. I know something's bubbling up inside of you. I can feel it. Tell us about a gift that you've received through an experience that was only in hindsight that you knew indeed it was a gift. Thanks, Kim. And thanks, Nadine, for that story. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, hearing about kind of visceral experiences that we have are really the ways that we understand a lot of things, which you've just described. For me, something really um, that's been dropping in lately is you can hear all the you can hear all the lessons in the world, but until you actually, you know, you can do all the self help, but until you actually experience it in the body, which is you know emanating out from the heart, that's when I think things actually drop in. And so it's okay. And I think the gift for me in that knowledge, to answer your question, Kim, is to be okay with knowing that when I hear something that I really want to embody, maybe it's not my time to embody it yet. And that time will come. And perhaps like Nadine's story, that, that experience, which sounds pretty harrowing and not like massage, <laughs> um, has, has obviously become a really important thing. And that was the time for that to happen. So she could be of service to people in the future. And so that's, that's the gift I think that's come through for me. Um, yeah. Is there anything that comes through for you? <laughs> I love that. You know, uh, it's interesting because I think Nadine was actually in a group coaching when I uh, told everyone the other day that it actually took me quite a lot of work processing um, that I don't have a cardiac issue. I have a neurological issue. I have a nerve issue, um, particularly with my vagus nerve. And and the interesting thing is, is that I believe I have a cardiac pacemaker as a result of something in my heart not working because the nerve doesn't actually invenerate the right messaging on a particular node, right? But um, it's allowed me to be a lot more compassionate towards people who have conditions that they didn't cause themselves, that they were born with. And... Um, I've spent 20 plus years in the healing industry, the helping, you know, the spa health and wellness industry. And there is such a strong message in that industry that almost everything is lifestyle related. And it's actually not necessarily the truth. Some of the solutions are lifestyle related. And yet I know from my own experience that were it not for the fact that I positively prime. I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually be here right now speaking because I would probably have out of the pauses that the six near-death experiences that I went through would have actually caused sufficient brain damage, right? Or I would have actually have had my kidneys fail. Except that I have this resilience mentally and emotionally and spiritually and physically because I've stacked so much over the years, whether it's the ionizing alkalizing water from a fancy Japanese water machine that cost a stupid amount of money, like ridiculous. Nonetheless, I think it was necessary for me to be able to sit here today and actually share this space with you and not be in a state that means I can't participate in life anymore or indeed even worse, I'd be totally dead, right? So, you know, I believe as hard or as complex or as uncomfortable as it has been for me to come to the realization that when I really accept that it's a gift, it allows me to actually be in a completely different state of receiving. So this conversation with Nadine is, it's so much more profound than I, than I, I hope everybody's gathering. It's not a surface level conversation that we're having here. It is so much deeper than that. 
Um, I watched Nadine's Positive Prime session because I'm healing my heart. There were surgeons who put these wires down into these chambers and had these little tools that tightened these screws into my heart muscle. And for me to think that that didn't impact me spiritually would be silly, you know. But I can't be angry with my body for failing me. No, you so can't. The only place to go to is peace. Huh? No, you can't. And an actual fact, we, you know, many, many things are not necessarily lifestyle or if even if they are lifestyle, you can change. Like you have the power to change. And, you know, um, recently, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I've worked with many, many people on many healing journeys and, you know, they've had great success. And my husband was recently diagnosed like this last summer uh, with a tumor in his pancreas. And so we're healing that. And uh, one of the things that I equate to the resilience is that if I ever start to doubt that we can heal it, I go to a positive prime session uh, because that keeps me in that frame of mind. Right. And um, he's incredible. He's doing incredibly well. Um, his next scan is in January and I fully expect that the tumor will be gone. And so, you know, um, I mean, there's lots of things that we're doing. We've done some major diet changes, um, for people that do watch my session, they might notice that I've lost 40 pounds, <laughs> um, just through, uh, lifestyle changes. Um, but he's, he's doing really well. And, I fully expect him to be totally healed um, at his next scan. So, um, but you know, when it comes to rust in your own home, as you say, you know, it's one thing to be doing this for other people, but when you, when it's in your own home, when it's in your own, you know, with your own partner um, or, or, or within yourself, uh, it, it becomes um, that much more uh, impactful, I guess is the word that I would use. Yeah. But it's important mindset, so important mindset. Mindset is part of is is a huge part of healing that that so often people do not take into consideration. So, and again, this is where positive prime comes into play. I would love, if you will, to consider doing um, a little uh, guidance around uh, heart energy healing, if we can now. Sure. Would you mind? No, yeah. no, no, not at all. Okay, so I'm going to settle into this, and I know Benny's up for it because he's always up for these kinds of things. And I'm pretty sure all of our positive prime guests are. Thank you so much for saying that about positive prime. That actually makes me cry <laughs> that you would go to positive prime to help you and your husband on this journey. And uh, I needed to show up today just to hear that. Well, let's all take a deep breath right from the bottoms of our feet up to our heart. And just close your eyes and just go into your heart. Just focus on your heart and just breathe into your heart. And as you breathe into your heart, I want you to think of someone that you love. And I want you to picture their face. And as you picture their face, I want you to feel the compassion for them and the love for them. And then I want you to feel the compassion and the love for yourself. And just breathe into that space, breathe that love and that compassion. And then feel that love and compassion flowing throughout your whole entire body. 
into every single one of your trillion cells. And then see that love and that compassion and that healing energy flowing from your heart and out into your energy field. And then see it flowing and filling up the room or the house or the building that you're in. And just continue to flow it out throughout your community and your city. And continue to flow it throughout your country. And then continue to flow it all the way around the world. Bringing a little more love and compassion to everyone and everything on the planet. Because on one level, we are all one. We are all connected. And every single one of you is impacting the whole entire world. So when you love yourself and you love other people and you send that loving healing energy out into the universe, you just never know how impactful you are. You are a child of the universe and you deserve to be here The world is a better place because you are in it. And never forget that. Always remember that. And maintaining that sense of love and compassion for the world, for yourself, and for your loved ones. Bring your attention back to your heart and just. Bring in the fullness of that love and compassion. And just listen. Listen to your heart. Because when you do what's truly best for you from your heart, it's truly best for everyone else, even if they don't like it. And when you're ready, you can just take a deep breath and come back into this moment by opening your eyes and thank you for letting me be part of your journey. I can even see with different eyes at the moment. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nadine. I don't know how I meant to ask questions now. <laughs> <laughs> this is floating <laughs> off. <laughs> um, but I did actually have something I was really curious about. Um, I'm probably just going to sway for a bit. Uh, when you were talking about, I, I've just got questions on the brain at the moment. And I'd love to know, is there a go-to question for you that is kind of, has, has been the most profound one that you ask yourself and perhaps you ask your clients? Hmm, my go-to question. Well, I I have I have a series of questions that I ask myself. Um, if they if things aren't going exactly the way that I wanted them to, I do have a series of questions that I ask myself. Um, the first one is what can I learn from this? <laughs> Which is a, a question that's really totally changed my life. Um, in terms of Every, every question, I, I, I can't say that there's one question. I, I think that asking questions and then letting them go would be the thing that I would say to you. So, you know, you know what, is my, what, is, what is the next step that I need to take? You know, and then you just let it go and, and wait for that inspiration to come. Or what, you know, sometimes you can ask questions like, so why am I always surrounded by love? if you're wanting to be more surrounded by love and then let it in, right? Or, you know, why am I always getting those intuitive messages right when I need them? So asking sort of questions and then letting them go is something that I think it's something that everyone could benefit from. <laughs> it's, it's one of those kinds of things. 
I think that with every person, you have to start at a different place because everybody's at a different place and everyone has their own model of the world. And so you have to really meet that person in their model of the world because that's what, that's what their reality is. And believe it or not, we all have our own realities. If we could actually step into each other's head, even for just a 30 seconds, we'd think everybody else was crazy. <laughs> Um, because we all think differently. We all, you know, um, uh, we all have deep beliefs that we've honed over the years. Um, the thing about deep beliefs, though, is that they, ch they can change a lot quicker than most people understand. And so just because we have a, a belief or we have something that we've picked up along the road doesn't mean that it's true, number one. And number two, it doesn't mean that you can't change it. Um, we can change our beliefs. We can change our, our values. We can change all kinds of things um, if we want to. We can change behaviors. We can change, you know, er anything you want to change, you can change it. Um, it does require that you do the work. It does require that you, you do that. And, and it's quite a lot easier than most people think. And again, positive prime can help you do that. <laughs> You know, I go back to, it's a really great tool, um, you know, and it, it is a tool though. And as with any tool, you have to use it. I mean, I, I have energetic tools that I use personally, and I, you know, I need to use those on a regular basis. I have, you know, meditation tools and you have to use them on a regular basis. I have breathing tools, you know, you got to use those on a regular basis. And it's the same thing with positive prime. You need to use it on a regular basis in order for it to work for you. And, you know, I, I use it oftentimes. I, I, had, I did a positive prime session just before we came on, um, <laughs> you know, because you want to be in the states that you want to be in order to manifest the things that you want to manifest. And, you know, people, you know, everybody's talking about the law of abundance and the law of attraction and the law of this and the law of that. The reality is, is that we're all manifesting machines. We're manifesting all the time. We're all intuitive. We're getting insights all the time. The question is, are we listening? Are we following? Are we acting on those? And, you know, really, I truly believe that everyone is innately good. Um, they did a study with babies. And uh, I don't, I don't know, Kim, if you remember, I know that you know about this study where, where they had, you know, they were, they were using puppets and, and one puppet was really helpful. And the other puppet was, was, was actually quite mean. And, and uh, they were colored and, and they gave the, in the end, they were trying to offer these, uh, these puppets to the children and the children didn't want the one that was mean they wanted the one that was actually kind and 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 helpful and you know uh, and so innately we're born good we're we have an innate goodness and you know everyone's just trying to get their needs met and as children if we can't get our needs met in a positive way, we'll get them met in a negative way. And so we, we learn some bad habits. We, we pick up some, some beliefs that aren't true. And one of the biggest beliefs that, that people seem to pick up is that they're not good enough. I, I deal with, with people all the time that feel they're not good enough, that they're not deserving. And, you know, it's just, it's, that's just a toll, whole load of, horse poop, um, <laughs> you know, because really they were born deserving. You cannot look at a newborn baby and tell me that they're not deserving. They shine. They're, you know, and um, everybody is born deserving. Everybody is born with goodness. And we just need to rediscover that within ourselves. And um, really that's, that's what I I do, you know, when my clients come in, I already love them, you know, I just do. Nobody's broken. I was just drinking that in. You're such a treat. Um, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank everybody for listening and for being with us and for sharing your love and compassion with the world and each other and us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Nadine, we will look forward to that heart-to-heart -heart hug face-to-face -face as soon as it's possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kim. I, I will mention my name means hope. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So just because you shared what your name meant, I thought I would share what my name meant. And my husband's joke is, well, there's always hope. And when he's talking about that, he's not talking, he's talking about me. But it's funny because we're the only two that knows what he's saying. Well, now the whole world knows. But um <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Nadine. Um, awesome. Is there is there a little bit of um, where can people get in touch with you if they want to experience some of your magic like we have here today? Well, Nadine Hanchar is a very rare name. I think there's only two of them on the web, um, and so if you Google my name, you can always find me. Um, my company name is Progressive Plus, uh, ProgressiveEdgePlus.com. Uh, pardon me. My website is progressiveplus.com. My company is Progressive Edge uh, plus NLP Incorporated, but progressiveplus.com is my, my website. <laughs> Sorry, confusing. <laughs> awesome. Oh, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope you feel like it's been of value. And I will see you again very soon, as will Benny, and with a new guest. Bye. Much love. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care.